Ways to access indigenous wisdom and knowledge can't just be done solely off internet research. I would encourage anyone to reach out to community. It, it must be done through elders. When you sit with elders and you sit with community, you ask those questions, you sort of get uh, a better sense of, of their life, their perspective, their ways of knowing and doing. And that in turn, I think, impacts educators in the classroom. And, uh, and watching an elder speak to a class is a literacy lesson in itself. And watching the kids engage with the community member or elder or traditionalist is uh, really rewarding. A lot of people are waiting for new curriculum to come. A lot of people are waiting for a teacher quality standard to be uh, solidified. We don't have to wait for all of those things to be mandated. It should have happened 10, five years ago. It can be happening now. So bringing in literature is the easiest way to start bringing in foundational knowledge into your classroom and start expanding the minds of students that you teach. I think one of the biggest things that teachers can be doing to enhance their own literacy and level of understanding is uh, picking up the calls to action and understanding what, what role do you play in reconciliation and how is literacy going to impact your class and you as a change agent. I always start with the ancestors. So um, if you can access local knowledge keepers within your space, if you can access elders, if you can access language keepers, if you can access knowledge keepers, of course we know that our, our elders are, are getting older and sometimes you know we, we give them a lot of jobs and we ask a lot of them, but it's okay to ask those younger elders too. It's okay to ask those escapios and it's okay to ask those people who are learning who are, who are just learning their experience and may be the elder's helper. So access those people in your community and create relationship with Indigenous educators. Look at consultants, look at liaisons, and really create um, kind of that relationship extend. Other practical ways might be using the circle in your classroom. Um, when you're sharing, when you're turn taking, you know, using that circle model, ensuring that children, you know, can't talk unless they have a talking stick, a sacred rock, or a, a, a sacred stick, you know, so kind of using that model of um, wait, wait and listen, listen and learn. And that's, that's a deep way of learning because often in um, spaces of learning, it's usually the children who are the loudest, who are the most assertive, who get to take those turns. And when you nurture a place of turn taking, it's a wonderful place to ensure that all people are part of that collective, all people are part of that collective wheel. And, um, and that creates balance, that creates harmony in our classrooms, and it creates harmony in our greater local communities too. Another great way would be to honor the seven sacred teachings, um, using that as character development. If you're in a public school, honing into that, you know, in um, a Catholic school system, those are essentially all good ways, the basis of living. And so kind of nurturing, you know, courage, um, nurturing humility, humbleness, nurturing all of those se seven sacred teachings and using that as a model and a guide in your classroom. Ensuring that it's posted. Is it posted at the front of your room? Is it posted around your room? Can children see that? Do you explore that daily? Um, are children honored? And I've heard elders say um, we need to honor the teachers, we need to honor our elders, and we need to honor our students. So how do we honor our students? We need to look at those seven sacred teachings and how we infuse that into our daily practice of being in our classroom. I think you can incorporate a lot of indigenous ways of doing or traditional education methods in the classroom all the time. One is through the circle process. So reading a book um, and then just having a discussion in the circle about what does that mean for you? Um, it could be done in kindergarten, it can be done in grade 12. Anyone can do um, model the circle process. As long as you're following those guidelines and you, you, you speak to elders and community members about how to properly do that in your classroom. Another uh, great suggestion is to bring in an elder or a traditional storyteller. Have them show you how traditional storytelling was done 
and then try to model that in your own classroom. Try to model how kids could be telling stories through just an oral process. I remember reading a few different stories, um, particularly one was about Wisaki Chuck, and Wisaki Chuck is a Cree trickster. And um, there's many stories about Wisaki Chuck and how he's always trying to trick people, but there's always a moral to the story. There's a reason why things are the way they are. And I remember, um, you know, trying to bring that into the classroom and talk about stories in a way that was engaging. So I, I actually just sort of tried to rem remember the stories. I put the book down and then I would just do the stories out loud through my own memory. And it was actually quite surprising how engaged um, all the students were. They liked that excitement and, it, and it's great practice for educators to, um, to try. What do I want to see different in modern day classrooms? I would love to see the traditional teachings of that territory posted on the walls, respected. I would love to hear in the morning greeting when the principal gets on the big system and says, good morning, we're in Treaty 6. I would love to hear Tanse, or if you're in the Northwest Territories, I'd love to hear Dante, or I'd love to hear Chimigwich, or I'd love to hear all the beautiful indigenous languages being addressed by leadership and by the teachers. And I'd love to see an active involvement with cultural keepers and knowledge keepers in the schools. I'd love for students to be using the language as much as possible and, and being genuine with it and being grateful that they are in this territory wherever they're involved in. That's what I'd love to see.